In the new world of artificial intelligence and quantum computing, things are changing rapidly. Technology is moving rapidly. In fact, the laws of physics continue to be broken. Apparently, people just keep finding, or at least computers, keep finding solutions to things that we previously thought were impossible. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. It's great to see you. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Bike. SciTech Daily has just reported that long considered impossible in physics, a non-linear circuit can harvest clean power using graphene. This is actually a in very interesting breakthrough because we actually thought this would never happen. The discovery overturns more than a century of physics beliefs by identifying a new form of energy that can be extracted from ambient heat using graphene. Now, we have the sun, we have the most incredible abundant source of energy, the sun, right? But really we don't use it to its best potential. Obtaining useful work from random fluctuations in a system at thermal equilibrium has long been considered impossible. In fact, Eminent American physicist Richard Feynman effectively shut down further inquiry in the 1960s after he argued in a series of lectures that Brownian motion or the thermal motion of atoms cannot perform any useful work. However, wasn't maybe all that true in the end. Well, it turns out things have changed. Feynman missed something very, very important. This was proven in a new study published in the journal Physical Review E titled Charging Capacitors from Thermal Fluctuations Using Diodes. Three of the paper's five authors are from the University of Kansas Department of Physics. According to the first author, Paul Thebedo, their study rigorously proves that thermal fluctuations of freestanding graphene when connected to a circuit with diodes having non-linear resistance and storage capacitors does in fact produce useful work by charging the storage capacitors. What does this mean? Well, the scientists discover that when the storage capacitors have an initial charge of exactly zero, the circuit draws power from the thermal environment to charge them. The team then demonstrated that the system satisfies both the first and the second laws of thermodynamics throughout the charging process. They also found that larger storage capacitors yield more stored charge and that a smaller graphene capacitance provides both a higher initial rate of charging and a longer time to discharge. This is actually a very significant discovery. These characteristics are important because they allow time to disconnect the storage capacitors from the energy harvesting circuit before the net charge is lost. This reminds me a little bit of what I was trying to do the other day. I actually bought uh, this little little swimming pool and you've got to blow it up. Now, the problem is it's not very big and it needs a lot of air pressure to actually hold its rigidity. However, when you take your mouth off the actual hose to blow air into it, the air would quickly escape. That was the challenge I was facing, similar to what we've faced in the past with capacitors. The latest publication builds on two of the group's previous studies. The first was published in a 2016 Physical Review Letters article entitled Anomalous Dynamical Behavior of Freestanding Graphene Membranes. In that study, Thebedo and his co-authors identified the unique vibrational properties of graphene and its potential for energy harvesting. The second was published in a 2020 Physical Review E article entitled Fluctuation Induced Current from Freestanding Graphene, in which they discuss a circuit using graphene that can supply clean, limitless power for small devices or sensors. Clean, limitless power. You heard that before? I'm sure you have. It sounds like something that we've seen in lots of different clickbait YouTube videos, lots of studies claiming that invented clean, limitless power. However, it's not often you actually hear this in the context of where the way I'm presenting it to you now, which is from actual peer reviewed studies proving that actually, in fact, this was achieved. The latest study progresses even further by establishing mathematically the design of a circuit capable of gathering energy from the heat of the earth and storing it in capacitors for later use. So we've got the sun. 
But actually the earth itself is also incredibly hot and we don't really use that temper that heat to its full potential. Theoretically, this is what we set out to prove, Thevedo explained. There are well-known sources of energy such as kinetic, solar, ambient radiation, acoustic and thermal gradients. Now, there is also non-linear thermal power. Usually, people imagine that thermal power requires a temperature gradient. That is, of course, an important source of practical power. But what we found is a new source of power that has never existed before. And this new power does not require two different temperatures because it exists at a single temperature. This study represents the solution to a problem Thibodeau has been studying for well over a decade when he and Kumar first tracked the dynamic movement of ripples in a freestanding graphene at the atomic level, discovered in 2004. Graphene is a one atom thick sheet of graphite. The duo, obser the duo observed that freestanding graphene has a rippled structure with each ripple flipping up and down in response to the ambient temperature. The thinner something is, the more flexible it is, Thibodeau said. And at only a single atom thick, there is nothing more flexible. It's like a trampoline, constantly moving up and down. If you want to stop it from moving, you have to cool it down to 20 Kelvin. His current efforts in the development of this technology are focused on building a device he calls a graphene energy harvester. GEH. GEH uses a negatively charged sheet of graphene suspended between two metal electrodes. When the graphene flips up, it induces a positive charge in the top electrode. When it flips down, it positively charges the bottom electrode, creating an alternating current. With diodes wired in opposition, allowing the current to flow both ways, separate paths are provided through the circuit, producing a pulsing DC current that performs work on a load resistor. How does this apply though in the real world? NTS Innovations, a company specializing in nanotechnology, owns the exclusive license to develop GEH into commercial products. Because GEH circuits are so incredibly tiny, mere nanometers in size, they are ideal for mass duplication on silicon chips. When multiple GEH circuits are embedded on a chip in arrays, more power can be produced. They can also operate in many environments, making them particularly attractive for wireless sensors in locations where charging batteries is inconvenient or expensive such as underground pipe systems or interior aircraft cable ducts. This actually solves some an incredibly large array of problems by having these batteries, or in a sense batteries, which are self-charging. Donald Meyer, founder and CEO of NTS Innovations, said of Thibodeau's latest effort, Paul's research reinforces our conviction that we are on the right path with graphene energy harvesting. We appreciate our partnership with the University of Kansas in bringing this technology to commercialization. Taking it to the market is what they aim to do. Ryan McCoy, NTS Innovations Vice President of Sales and Marketing said, there is broad demand across the electronics industry to shrink form factors and decrease dependency on batteries and wired power. We believe graphene energy harvesting will have a profound impact on both. And in fact, it could have a profound impact on the world. On the long road to making this latest theoretical breakthrough, the team said, there was always this question out there. If our graphene device is in a really quiet, really dark environment, would it harvest any energy or not? The conventional answer to that is no, as it apparently defies the laws of physics. But the physics had never been looked at carefully. I think people were afraid of the topic a bit because of Feynman. So everybody just said, I'm not touching that. But the question just kept demanding our attention. Honestly, its solution was only found through the perseverance and diverse approaches of our unique team. And maybe some computer AI as well. Now, this new technology, it sounds almost miraculous. I mean, this is a form of just creating 
virtual free energy. It's only at a small scale though. You couldn't power an electric car with this, at least not yet. Anyway, you never know what the future holds. In fact, things are changing so quickly. Well, who knows where we'll be looking at? Who knows where this technology will be in 50 years from now? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching.